muscles of the pelvis help to provide support for the contents. So your uh, pelvic organs kind of sit on top of this pelvic diaphragm. So um, the levator ani, uh, the coccygeus here is pictured here. So all these kind of form a diaphragm um, that moves uh, with inhalation and exhalation and helps to support the organs uh, from below. The uh, pelvic wall also has the piriformis muscle that runs um, from the anterior portion of the sacrum uh, out to the femur. Uh, this muscle is really important because sometimes when spasmed, um, it could potentially irritate the sciatic nerve. In fact, in some patients, um, the, in some people, the sciatic nerve actually passes through the piriformis muscle. And so irritation of the piriformis muscle can uh, irritate the sciatic nerve, mimicking um, neuropathic pain going down the leg, uh, which one might think could be a herniated disc, but sometimes it could be from piriformis syndrome. The obturator internus is also another muscle that helps to make that uh, surround the uh, pelvis and the pelvic floor. Muscles of the trunk and lower extremity allow for locomotion. Uh, you have muscles uh, anteriorly that attach to the pelvis, including the rectus abdominis, uh, transverse abdominis, and the internal external obliques. These muscles kind of come together and help form uh, your core muscles, um, the cylinder that wraps around all the way to the back, and it helps to strengthen and support your uh, lumbar spine and attaches along the pelvis. If you do have um, overuse or inflammation, sometimes these muscles where it attaches to the pubic bone could be inflamed and uh, it could cause pain in the uh, pubic region. Your quadratus lumborum is a really important muscle that attaches along the uh, lumbar spine and also to the 12th rib. Uh, it then attaches along the iliac crest. Um, when activated unilaterally, it's gonna cause side bending uh, and some extension bilaterally. What happens with the quadratus lumborum is if it's inappropriately spasmed, it could really uh, contribute to low back pain, uh, pelvic pain, it could cause uh, and some dysfunctions and uh, asymmetries of the pelvis itself, um, and also could affect breathing because it uh, could lock down the 12th rib, preventing the diaphragm from moving well. The iliopsoas um, is consistent of two different muscles. You have your psoas major and also the iliacus. So the iliacus kind of originates along the rim of the uh, inside border of the inanimate, comes down and blends in with psoas major, which originates from the anterior portions of the lumbar spine. This muscle comes down and attaches to the femur. It's a really important muscle because it um, tends to um, flex the hip, but bilaterally flex uh, the spine. And uh, this muscle sometimes tends to become more spasmed, especially if you uh, move from a crouch uh, or flex position suddenly to a standing or straight position. Uh, patients may complain about unilateral uh, sharp uh, back pain that radiates down into their groin, mimicking uh, kidney stones. So iliopsoas spasm is something that you should consider when someone has lower back pain and has a history of complaining of difficulty standing up and there's involvement with the hip. You could actually perform a special test called the Thomas test uh, where you see how much um, the muscle could be stretched in order to see if uh, it's contracted. Muscles of the lower extremity. So you have a lot of different muscles that attach from the uh, pelvis down into the leg. These uh, muscles can potentially um, cause any asymmetry when spasm. They could kind of pull um, the inanimate uh, forward or out of place. So the rectiform morris uh, has its origins at the AIIS, or the anterior inferior iliac spine. Uh, you have your sartorius, which originates at the ASIS, which is the anterior superior iliac spine. Uh, in addition, you have gracilis, uh, the tensor fasciolata a little bit more laterally, um, blending into the IT band or iliotibial band. Um, again, the ileus iliopsoas muscle, and then you have your adductors that originate from the pubic bone. Um, of note, the adductors and abductors of the hip uh, sometimes could be activated uh, to help try to treat some of these um, somatic dysfunctions of the pelvis. So um, a lot of times, some of the treatments that we utilize utilizes these muscles in order to try to um, make the uh, asymmetry better. And uh, sometimes by treating uh, hypertonic muscles, you, we're able to decrease the cause of what's causing the somatic dysfunctions in the first place. So it's important to kind of really understand where the muscles are located, where they originate from, where they attach, and how uh, a spasm muscle here, uh, let's say the rectus femoris, if it's spasm, would cause a asymmetry at the pelvis. Looking at the uh, muscles that attach to the pelvis posteriorly um, along the uh, 
posterior border of the crest, we have your gluteus muscles. Uh, here you see the AD ductors uh, attaching, uh, and then the bicep femoris, which is the major hamstring muscles in the back of the leg, uh, which all of these tend to help more with hip extension. Um, but here again, if these muscles are spasmed, it may create a different pull, uh, causing a shift in the anonymous rotations.